Good morning. And welcome to all. Um, it is good to be here. Uh, we're all here, probably a little bit sleepier than normal because we all lost an hour of sleep. But um, it's good to uh, to be here. Um, somehow, yeah, it was funny. A, a meme sh I found last night um, on my Facebook feed showed um, Doc Brown from Back to the Future saying, you know, great Scott, we've all been transported an hour into the future. So, uh, but um, anyway, we had the time change this week. A um, couple of brief announcements. First of all, there's a couple inserts in your bulletin. The, the pink one, um, the pink one is um, promoting a, a um, ecumenical gathering. We will be ha that'll be happening at Berkeley Hills Lutheran Church on Sunday, March 26th. Uh, for Martin Luther King, a celebration of the legacy of Martin Luther King. It's an ecumenical service. Um, and I believe they intended to do this last year, but um, because there was an outbreak of the pandemic, jumped up again, there was an outbreak or something last year that uh, prevented that from happening. Uh, there's a QR code down there at the bottom if you want more information about it, but it sounds like quite an event. And then also uh, two weeks, warning, two week warning, for your orders for flowers for Easter. Also due on the 26th. Um, other than that, we continue with our Lenten worship on Wednesday mornings at 11 and our study, our supper and study at 6.30 on Wednesday evenings. Uh, and um, other than that, I believe there's a youth committee meeting um, today after worship. And um, any other joys or concerns to share? Yeah, go ahead, Karen. The Easter egg hunt, that's on Saturday? Yeah, and that's uh, the Saturday before Easter. All right, Easter egg hunt. And that, that's the egg extravaganza, right? Yeah, that's fun. I know my grandkids are going to be here for that. Um, they enjoyed it last year. Anyway, all right, anything else? If not, I invite those that are able to please stand as we join in our confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, and uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through him. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the kids to come on up. And children want, hey, there they come. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to share something with you guys today. <laughs> a couple years ago, I had back problems and I had back surgery and I had trouble bending down and doing stuff. And so when I went in for physical therapy, the nice gentleman gave me this grabber thingy, which allows me to grab things that are far away, or like if I'm sitting down, I mean here, I can reach over here, I'll grab one of the teddy bears, see? And it helped me out a lot, you know? It helped me, because I, I was sitting, or, and even today, I have stuff now like that fall down behind the piano, I can reach down and, and get it. It comes in handy now and again. So I wanted to share that, because it really helps. And in our story today, You'll hear um, in the gospel reading, we'll hear about the story about this woman, a Samaritan woman who is at a well, and Jesus shows up at this well, and he is tired, and he is thirsty. And he says to the woman, get me a drink. And this woman, now we don't actually hear it in the story, it doesn't actually explain, but we uh, can assume in the story that this woman did and gave him, in fact, I have a painting that I showed church council the other night, that um, shows her holding a cup. And she filled, now he couldn't have gotten the water by himself because the well there was 90 feet deep and they needed the rope and they needed a bucket to get it. So, so she needed to help him to get this water. So she helped Jesus when he was needing something. And you know what? I was thinking about that and how things help. Like she was a helper. Just like this was a helper for me, she became a helper. And you know what? We can become helpers too. We're, we're, and we can be Jesus' helpers. We can, whenever we do things, when we care for other people, when you help out around the house, when you, when you do things to help other people, you're also helping Jesus. Because, you know, one time, said, one time I heard somebody say that you can see the face of Jesus in other people. So as you go out and you help others, you're also helping Jesus. So think of ways. Be a helper. And just like this was a helper for me, you can be like that extra hand to help Jesus out in the world, helping people, loving people, caring for their needs. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we give thanks that, that you love us so much Help uh, and help us in so many ways. Help us 
Be your hands out there helping others in need, that we may see the, your face in the face of those that we meet. And we ask this in your name. And all God's people say, Amen. Don't, not yet. <laughs> see, I had my eyes closed. I didn't even see her get up. Let's turn to God's holy word. First reading is from the 17th chapter of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephunadim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take them in your hand, the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa, or Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from the fifth chapter of Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we, are, while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely have been reconciled, will be saved through his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have been received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father and neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know, and we worship what we know. For salvation is... For from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worship, worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. 
Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jug and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one else has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do, not, do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripening for harvest. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent, sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. Then they said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. And grace, mercy, and peace to you on this day in the name of God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, water is something that we take for granted. I mean, face it, we turn on the tap and it is there. There's bottled water and it is an everyday sight nowadays. And if you don't have that, you have one of those refillable um, water containers that you carry around with you. But water, those, you know, but water bottles are now found in vending machines like Coke or Pepsi. In fact, if we don't have water, when we turn on our tap, if it doesn't come out or, or if it's contaminated in some way or whatever, it, we just all go into a, into, a, into, a, into shock and worry and a frenzy because we're so used to it just being there. And then we're reminded, because usually we forget how essential water is for our survival. I read, the, I read somewhere that to maintain a high level of health and efficiency, even in ideal environments, a minimum of two quarts of clean water per day per person is the accepted rule of thumb. In very hot or cold or dry environments, or if you're physically active, two quarts of water a day may not be enough to sustain life over, uh, over a period of days or weeks. However, if a dehydrated person receives water, you can be quickly restored to health. People have survived without food for, for weeks, even months, but to go without water for even just one day and the survivor will be in desperate trouble. It's been shown that if you lose just 2.5% of your body weight from water loss, you will lose 25% of your efficiency. Very often now, as I go visit folks, one of the seniors, one of the reasons why a lot of people end up in the hospital is not because they're, they fell or they're injured, it's because they're dehydrated. They go in, they get an IV hooked up with some saline solution, and next day they can go home and be fine. For a 175-pound man, that's only about two quarts of water to lose 2.5% of your body weight. At the most, if you avoid exertion and stay in the shade, you can survive only two days without water. So important. 
In this account found only in John's Gospel, Jesus arrives at the historic well in Samaria. It's noon, the heat of the day. Hot and tired from his journey, he rests while the disciples go off to find some food. And this woman shows up alone with her water jug to fill, and Jesus asks her for some water and this whole rather unique extended conversation occurs. First of all, it's a situation that defies all expectations, all traditions, and all normal behaviors at the time. Jesus, a Jew, is traveling through the, the hated Samaria region, right? A place that all Jews avoided if possible, even though it was the most direct travel way, most direct travel to go from Galilee to Jerusalem. People would take the the road that went around rather than through. Jesus, a uh, single male, single male is alone here with a woman. Unheard of. And even worse, he's talking to her back then. It's also very strange for a woman to go to the well by herself. It was a, usually a community event for women usually happening first thing in the morning. This high noon conversation re sort of reminds us last week when we had a dark night dialogue between Jesus and Nicodemus, right? Who was confused by the difference between being born again and being born again from above. And here, living water, the term for fresh, clear moving water, like from a spring or a stream, versus the brackish water drawn from a well. And what Jesus claims to have, water that brings new life. Well, that confuses the woman about what he's talking about. Jesus breaks all the taboos to listen, to hear what this woman is saying and truly knows who she is. Despite, despite many people who read this passage over the years and, and, and claim that this unnamed woman is some kind of big sinner, Jesus never condemns her or even criticizes her. He listens and he knows her. We do not know why she's had so many husbands, maybe widowed a bunch of times, abandoned or divorced, which back then was pretty much the same thing. Who knows? Is she surviving the only way possible? Is she ignored or an outcast in her town? Is that why she came to the well by herself in the heat of the day? We don't know these things. But what, and whatever hurt, pain, missed opportunities, and loss have, have turned her life into some kind of hot desert wasteland. Someone once said, sometimes being listened to is so much like being loved, it's impossible to tell the difference. Jesus listens and hears. Jesus cuts to the heart of her parched reality when he asks her to bring her husband, knowing the response that it would bring. Like people are prone to do, she tries to change the subject away from herself. You know, he gets, she, he's getting too personal here. Discovering that he must be a Jewish prophet, knowing stuff like that about her, she tries to engage Jesus in a discussion of theology. Yeah, that's better than talking about myself. But he refocuses the conversation as he tells her, the hour is coming and is now here. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to you. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. All of us can find ourselves at times in one way or another in the same place as this Samaritan woman. She's nameless in that empty place where her name could be. I think we can find our own name, fill in the blank. 
written in those times when we feel like dried up husks, scorched by events, circumstances, or grim realities that we'd rather avoid thinking about or talking about with someone. We can be in need of healing. We thirst for a place where we can allow ourselves to really acknowledge who we are. And in that moment, be graced by a Savior who does not turn away from our shame, our hurts, or our failures, or our longings, but who floods our failed lives with his renewing, living water. A surging tide of the Holy Spirit that satisfies our deepest longing to be and to be fully known and accepted and loved. In which our thirst is slaked for true and essential and lasting life that revives us and enables us not just to survive another day, but to thrive, to, be, to have the abundant life that Jesus talks about in John's Gospel. And if you notice, refreshed and renewed, the woman leaves her jar behind. She was no longer thirsty, but she went back to the people of her village who have maybe judged and shunned her as someone no longer invisible but validated as a living human being. There's a sense of born again from above to this story. You know, like Nicodemus heard about last week. In the living water of Christ, there is a new creation. And this one solitary woman shares this grace that she's known bringing others to hear this good news from, from the one that truly is the savior of the world. It's a woman who is the first evangelist in John's gospel. In the middle of the exhausting heat of existence in Christ, God's love has been poured into our hearts as well through the Holy Spirit that's been given to us, quenching our thirst for wholeness, for peace, and life abundant. Amen.
us join in a confession of our common faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. We pray for your church, bless partnerships with other Christians in ecumenical interreligious dialogue, guide the daily work of the denominational and congregational leaders of churches, strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel that all experience your life-giving love. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this universe. All creation teams with life, with, with life from the depths of the earth and the seas to the skies above. Fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preservation of life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be, pre be present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those with chronic illness or other sickness. Today we pray for Rose, Allison, Eric, Mary, Liam, Cindy, Mark, Joan, Jerry, Andre, Debbie, Dottie, Joan, Bob, Jean, Mike, Nancy, Rose, Mindy, and Matt. Today, we remind ourselves that although it is Lent, we are God's people that celebrates Easter. We remember that today is the third anniversary of the third Sunday in Lent, 2020, when we went into our own exile and you did not abandon us. We remember the words, we will never know how we are truly blessed. We remind ourselves that we may give our children water and not fear for illness and their death. We give thanks for all we have. Give them and us your living water always. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation. We pray for this congregation in an interim status. 
We pray for the call committee, but we know that we always have your steadfast word during this period of interim ministry. Nurture our faith and the faith of others and pour your love into their hearts. Inspire our community by the testimony to God's grace in our lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks to the lives for the saint of the saints, their hope in your sustained love of faith and service. Encourage us with the hope they shared with you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share this gift. God's, God's peace. peace. Hey, Pastor, can you take out your place for collection? Because I'm going to be back here. Okay. And I'll, yeah. I'll come up for retrieving. Yeah. I'll, I'll get the second time.
God of good gifts, receive, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very pleasure through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Come Holy Spirit with your holy ones of all times and all places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Amen.
shed for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in grace. Amen. Amen. thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you on this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. 